Welcome to Corey Turner Talks Cars. Thank you for subscribing to our YouTube channel. And it's time for the Week in Review. We're going to look back at all the shows we posted this past week, and you can watch them all right here. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corey Turner Talks Cars, and it's time for Picture That Car. We're going to test your car knowledge to see if you can name the car just by looking at the picture. You get one point for each one you get right. Leave your score in the comments. We'll give you a shout out. Let's dive in there and see if you can picture that car. Now, today's cars, we are looking at either a Cherokee, a Firehawk, a Beetle, or a Mustang. So we're going to see if you can tell the difference just by looking at the pictures between those four cars. Let's dive right in. Here we go. Picture number one, we've got a red vehicle. As you know, I call everything cars, so we're just going to say cars, right? We've got a red car here. We're seeing the tire, some uh, ventilation there, maybe in front of or behind the tire. Not sure, right? Is this a Cherokee, a Firehawk, a Beetle, or a Mustang? All right, lock in your answer. Let's go on to picture Number two, here we go. Picture number two, we got a close up here. I'm gonna say that is some tail lights. Do you recognize those tail lights? Is that a Cherokee, a Firehawk, a Beetle, or a Mustang? Lock in your vote. Have you got it? All right, let's look at the next one. All right, we're looking at a close up. That is definitely a headlight. Looks like a front grill. Is that a Cherokee, a Firehawk, a Beetle, or a Mustang? Can you name it from that? All right, here we go. Let's look at the final one. We've got a close-up here. I think I see a door handle, it looks like, and maybe a side mirror. Is that a Cherokee, a Firehawk, a Beetle, or a Mustang? All right, do you have all your votes locked in? All right, here we go. We're going to go through now and take a look at those pictures again and see if you got them right. Remember, one point for each one you got right. Leave your points in the comments. We'll sure and give you a shout out. All right, here we go. Here was the first one. This was a red car. We were seeing a tire. What car was this? Oh yeah, this right here is the Pontiac Firehawk. Absolutely love this car. Almost bought one in this exact same color combination. In fact, we have a viewer that has the car looks just like this. They're gonna send in some pictures for us. Can't wait to see that. So that's a Firehawk. If you said Firehawk, great job. You got one point. All right, here we go to our next one. All right, we are looking at some tail lights here. Do you know which car that is? Oh yeah, that is a classic Mustang. That is a good looking car. I took that picture there. Um, I was at a, I believe I was at a Target, as a matter of fact, and saw that amazing Mustang. So we took that picture. Did you say Mustang? If you said Mustang, great job. You got another point that gives you another point. And let's move on to the third picture. All right, what are we looking at here? We know we're looking at a grill. We're looking at a headlight. Do you know which vehicle that is? Oh yeah. That is a Jeep Cherokee, and as a matter of fact, on that day, I saw twins. There were two of them sitting beside each other. I took those pictures of those two there. A couple of good-looking Jeep Cherokees. So if you said Cherokee on that picture, you got another point. Great job. All right, now here we go. Here is the last one. Now, as it is, we may use the same car twice. You never know. Is this a Cherokee, a Firehawk, a Beetle, or a Mustang? Yeah, we... Didn't use the same picture twice. That is a classic uh, Beetle, and that is actually a friend of mine and a viewer. He has was selling that car. He may have already sold it, but he sent those pictures over, and that is a classic Volkswagen Beetle. Okay, if you got that one right, you got another point. Okay, so how did you do today? What was your score? A maximum of four points if you got them all right. Be sure to leave your point total in the comments. I'd also like to hear if one of the pictures messed you up, which one was it? and which one threw you off. So remember to like. Welcome to Corey Turner Talks Cars, and it's time for zero to 60. I'm gonna ask you six random automotive trivia questions. You're gonna get 10 points for each one you get right. Leave your score in the comments. Let's see if you can go zero to 60. Here we go with question number one. What was the best selling car in the United States in 2015? Now, not the vehicle, that would be the Ford F-Series, of course, but what was the best selling car? Was it A, the Toyota Camry? B, the Toyota Corolla, or C, the Honda Accord? Do you know? All right, here we go for 10 points. The correct answer is the Toyota Camry. In 2015, it sold a little over 429,000 units, which is amazing. It was followed by the Toyota Corolla. Great job, Toyota Top 2. And after that, the Honda Accord. So if you got that right, great job. You got 10 points. And let's move on to question Number two, 
who gets credit for convincing Hummer to sell a civilian version of the H1? Was that A, Sylvester Stallone, B, Arnold Schwarzenegger, or C, Lee Iacocca? All right, do you know who it is? Who do we thank for the civilian version of the H1? For 10 points, the correct answer is... Oh yeah, it's the Terminator himself, Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Apparently, he saw a convoy of Humvees driving down the freeway and said, I gotta have one of those, and Hummer said... Okay, and the rest is history. This is a picture of him taking delivery of the first H1, and um, we have him to thank for the civilian version of the Hummer H1. So did you get that one right? If you did, you got 10 points. Great job. Let's move on to question number three. Which car has the fastest quarter mile? Is it A, the McLaren P1? Is it B, the Bugatti Veyron? Or is it C, the Dodge Challenger SRT? Demon, do you know which one has the fastest quarter mile? Well, if you've been watching my show lately, you will know the answer is, oh yeah, it's the Dodge Demon. Uh, this thing turned the quarter mile in 9.65 seconds. The Bugatti did it in 9.7. So it wasn't much faster, but it was faster. That gave the fastest quarter mile of those to the Dodge Demon. Fantastic job if you got that right. 10 points for you if you did. Let's move on to question number four. The 2019 Lamborghini Urus is not the company's first SUV. What was? Was it A, the LM002, B, the Miura, or C, the Jalpa? All right, do you know your Lamborghinis? Do you know your Lamborghini SUVs? Okay, well, the Miura is probably one of the most beautiful sports cars ever. The Jalpa was a great car as well. But the first Lamborghini SUV was the LM002. As a matter of fact, I have a matchbox of it right there. That is a good-looking Lamborghini, right? All right, that is it. It was square. It was angular. It was mean. It was aggressive. We talked earlier that Arnold Schwarzenegger brought us the Hummer. This one was actually named the Rambo Lambo, <laughs> right? Sylvester Stallone Rambo. All right, anyway, but... It's cool ugly. I love these. this one. I love this SUV. Wouldn't mind having one of these bad boys. This one was for sale at Lamborghini. Looks like Newport Beach. I'll put the link in the description. This one's actually for sale right now. Awesome SUV. Awesome Lamborghini. That big Lamborghini engine in there. Woo, what a car. So if you got that right, you got 10 points. Let's move on to question number five. Which Mitsubishi sports car name was brought back in 2018 as a crossover SUV. I was kind of disappointed when I heard it because I loved this car. I thought they were great cars. Loved the name and it came back as a crossover SUV. Was it A, the 3000 GT, B, the Eclipse, or C, the Lancer Evo? Do you know the answer? All right. Well, in 2018, Mitsubishi brought back the Eclipse name and called it the Eclipse Cross was so excited when they say the Eclipse was coming back. I thought this is what Mitsubishi needed, a, a sports car, put them back on the map. And I know that today is all about SUVs. I totally do. And this is actually a really good little SUV. I just wish they hadn't used the Eclipse name. Wish they'd given it a different name. This one was for sale at Hearst Autoplex. Uh, so be sure to check the, uh, uh, the link in the description if you want to see that. If you got that right and said the Eclipse Cross, great job. You got another 10 points. And here we go, the final question. Question number six, true or false? A timing belt failure can destroy an interference engine. Is that true or is that false? Okay, well, the answer to that is, yeah, that's absolutely true. In an interference engine, the valves occupy the same space so the pistons do not at the same time. But if that timing belt breaks, it can cause the valve and the piston to occupy that same space at the same time and you have catastrophic damage to that engine. They do that because you can get a comp com uh, higher compression rates, but if that timing belt goes. So if you're buying a car, make sure the timing belt, especially if it has an interference engine, make sure that timing belt is new or has been recently replaced or is in good shape because you can have some amazing damage to the engine. Uh, have to do an engine replacement, actually, uh, if that were to happen. So, okay, there it is. That was question number six. If you got that right, 10 points. All right, so how did you do today? Did you go zero to 60? Be sure to leave your score in the comments. Also, tell us if you missed one, 
Which one did you miss? Which one stumped you? Remember to like, comment. Hello everybody and welcome to Corey Turner Talks Cars. And it's time for Name That Car. We're gonna test your automotive knowledge today. But first, let me say thank you for subscribing to our YouTube channel. Because of you, our numbers are growing and I really appreciate it, so thank you. All right, let's dive in and see if you can name that car. Okay, here we go, clue number one. This is for 10 points. If you get it right, you get 10 points. Be sure to leave your score in the comments. I was the first mass-produced car to feature an all-aluminum body. All right, can you solve it from that clue right there, the all-aluminum body? If so, you got 10 points, maximum score, great job. If not, don't worry. We'll move on to clue number two. Here we go. Clue number two, this is for seven points. I was designed to take on the V8-powered Ferraris of the late 1980s and the 1990s with a heavy focus on reliability and at a retainable price point. So the focus was on reliability and being at an obtainable price point. Were you able to solve it right there? If you got it right, great job. Seven points. Be sure to leave your score in the comments. If not, don't worry. Let's move on to clue number three. Here we go, this is for five points. I was a two-seater, mid-engine sports car that ended production in 2005 until my name badge was reborn in 2016 as a 3.5 liter twin turbo hybrid sports car with three electric motors. All right, was that enough information for you there? There was what, about 11 years span when it was on vacation from 2005 to 2016? Do you know which car we're talking about? Designed to take on the V8 Ferraris? If so, great job. You got five points if you solved it there. But if not, let's move on to the next clue. Here we go. When I hit the market in 1990, I featured an all-aluminum 3.0 liter VTEC V6 mated to a five-speed manual transmission. My F-Matic four-speed automatic wasn't available as an option until 1994. Okay, so it's an all-aluminum 3.0 liter VTEC V6. That probably gives away a clue, at least to the manufacturer is right. Do you know which car we're talking about? It's a supercar. If so, great job. If you got it there, you got three points. If not, don't worry. Let's move on to the next clue. All right, this is the final clue. If you solve it here, you get one point. Released under Honda's upscale brand, my name stood for New Sports Car Experimental. All right, so I was released under Honda's upscale brand, and my name stood for New Sports Car Experimental. Do you know which car we're talking about? I bet you do. Absolutely, the car today is, oh yeah, it's the Acura NSX, and what an amazing car this was. It had the looks of a supercar, it had the performance of a supercar, yet it had the reliability of a Honda. And it was at a pretty good price point. I mean, it was still expensive, but it was an obtainable price where the Ferraris were way up there. Probably couldn't, couldn't afford one of those, right? But you could afford an NSX and you could drive it every day and it was reliable and yet it looked like a supercar. And I still think it's amazing. Yes, it came back in 2016. It's an amazing high-performance hybrid sports car as well, but of course I still love the, the old school NSX of the 90s. So as always, I like to go online and see if these things are for sale and see what they're going for right now. So let's take a look. I pulled some up. All right, first of all, let's look here. This is a 1995 Acura NSX. Uh, it's at Cape Coral, Florida at Gulf Coast Motor Works. This one has 30,196 miles on it. Uh, they want $69,995 for it. Look at that. That is a great looking car. That is amazing, isn't it? Um, oh yeah, we can see it up close here. Look at that. Yeah, there's something about that look, that style. The pop-up headlights, right? Yeah, that is a good looking NSX right there. Now, of course, in 2016, the brand new NSX came out. I've got one of those too. This one is for sale at the Louisville Autoplex. It's a used 2017 Acura NSX. They're asking $137,500 for this example. Uh, and it is, wow, look at that. 
it's a good looking car this one only has 3276 miles on it so i'm going to say it is absolutely brand new right that is a good looking car and uh, it's a supercar and it has supercar pricing right $137,500 what an amazing car so it was the Acura NSX. What's the mystery car of the day? Were you able to name it? Be sure to leave your score in the comments. We want to give you a shout out. Remember to like, comment. Hello everybody, welcome to Corey Turner Talks Cars. And it's time for MSRP. We're gonna see if you know the numbers when it comes to cars. But first, we want to give a shout out. Here's just a, some of the people that played yesterday, that left their score, that commented, that liked, that got involved. Thank you to each one of you. We want to see your name on the board tomorrow. So be sure to leave your score in the comments, share us with your friends. All right, let's dive in and see if you know the MSRP. Here we go, car number one. This is a 2019 Lamborghini Aventador S. Of course, it's all wheel drive. This is the Roadster model. It's a 6.5 liter V12. It produces 729 horsepower and it is a good looking car. So what is the MSRP? Is it A, $399,051? Is it B, $509,725? Or is it C, $460,247? All right, lock in your vote. Do you have it? All right, for one point, if you get it right, it's one point. The answer is C, it's $460,247. Now they sound like imaginary dollars to me when you get to those numbers, but that's probably a really good, great price for an incredible car. All right, if you got that right, one point. Let's move on to car number two. Okay, this is a 2019 Ram 1500 Bighorn. This is the Lone Star, Lone Star Edition, right? It's a 3.6 liter V6, has the eight-speed automatic, it's four by four, it's got the six foot four inch bed. And what is it going for? What's the MSRP? Is it A, $39,749? B, $41,500, or C, $31,999. All right, do you have your answer? All right, let's find out. The 2019 Ram 1500 Bighorn is A. The MSRP is $39,749. All right, if you got that right, fantastic. You got another point. Maybe it's your first point, but you got a point if you got it right. Let's move on to the next car. This is a 2016 Toyota Camry LE. It's a it has a 2.5 liter four cylinder. It puts out about 176 horsepower. It's a six speed automatic transmission, which actually is really impressive because this is the base model, right? It has a 6.1 inch touchscreen with backup camera. And what is was the MSRP in 2016? Was it A, $19,565, B, $23,070 or C, was it $16,959? They all actually sound like a great deal for what you get for a Toyota Camry, but what is the right answer? It is B, $23,070 for what is the uh, was the best-selling car in America, right? The 2016 Toyota Camry. If you got that right, you got another point. Great job. And here comes our final car. Okay, I know technically it's not a car, it only has three wheels, but I think it's cool and I think it's gonna come up on an episode of I Won It, so watch out for that. All right, this is the 2019 Polaris Slingshot S, so that is the base model. It has 173 horsepower, uh, ABS, five-speed manual, has 17-inch wheels in the front, has a big old 18-inch wheel in the back, and I always laugh because they say it comes with open air. I think you can do the shades I think they're called sling shades, if I remember. You can put on the top, but in the base model, this is just open air cruising. Is it A, $17,899? Is it B, $20,999? Or is it C, $27,999? So a 2019 Polaris Slingshot S, basically the Batmobile you can drive around the street, right? How much does it cost? The MSRP is $20,999, and you get every penny's worth. These things are awesome. Have not got to ride in one. Uh, I've set in two of them, uh, but uh, plan to take one of those out for a test drive soon. All right, so how did you do today? What was your score out of four possible points? What did you get? Be sure to leave your score in the comments. Remember to like, comment, and share. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corey Turner Talks Cars, and it's time for I Want It. The Porsche 
9-11. But first, I have to say thank you. We hit 8,000 views on YouTube today. We have 133 subscribers, and we did it in just over two months. So thank you to all of you for sharing the show with your friends. I really do appreciate it. Okay, the Porsche 911 probably comes as no surprise. I am not the only one out there that stares every time one of these bad boys cruises by. This is an iconic design that has been modified by tuners around the world, has an extensive racing pedigree that we'll talk about in a different show, and is a legitimate supercar that in 2017 had its one millionth unit produced. This is not your base model made for the masses, inexpensive car like a, like a Volkswagen Beetle. This is a highly refined, masterfully engineered sports car with a hefty price tag that sold a million units. That stat alone is mind blowing. Now, normally when I talk about a car I want, there are specific years in mind, but with a Porsche 911, of course I'd love to get a 1972, but when it comes to this German engineered masterpiece, I'll take any year, right? <laughs> this car came out in 1963. That means this car has been on sale for 56 years, and yet it is as awe-inspiring and as relevant today as it was the day it debuted. Now, the newest 911, the 2020 Carrera 4S Cabriolet, will set you back around $144,000, which means your monthly payment, if you buy one of these, is gonna be like $2,500 plus per month. That's crazy and more power to you if you can afford it. I'm very proud of how your life is turning out if you can, right? So now the 2020 Carrera 4S Cabriolet features a 3.0 liter, six cylinder turbo producing 443 horsepower. Now there's a wide variety of trims and options and you can customize it in just about any way you want to and make it your 911. So where did it all start? Well, when it was time to replace the beautiful but aging 356, Porsche created the 901, now stay with me. The 911 was originally named the 901, but when trademark claims came up from Peugeot, Porsche changed the name to 911. Now per a 2017 Road & Track article, I'll put the link to that in the description, Porsche had already ordered all the nines, all the zeros, and the ones in volume. And since they had already had a, a 910 race car back in 1966, they went with the 911, and history was made. Now when it hit the streets, the 1963 911 had an air-cooled flat six boxer engine that produced about 130 horsepower. It had its rear engine set up that slung the motor way past the rear axle. Now looking at it, probably shouldn't have worked, right? All that weight, way past the rear axle, a lightweight front end. Honestly, it should have been a handling nightmare, but due to the creative genius of the talented engineers at Porsche, that little 911 was a brilliant handling sports car that amazed anybody that got the chance to get behind the wheel. It was amazing. When you look at a modern 911, in essence, you're looking at that 1963 rebadged 901 that was tearing up the streets and the racetracks. The overall style of the car hasn't changed that much. It's gotten a little bigger, a little wider, more rounded, but anyway, <laughs> It's still a 911 at heart. I think it's that commitment to its heritage that makes me so connected to the car and why I like it so much. Now, over the years, the 911 may have held true to its form, but it has seen an insane amount of updates and options and additions. Targas, convertibles, turbos, GTS, Roadster, GT3, the GT2 RS, you name it, and there's a crazy variant of the 911 to fit your dreams as long as you have the funds, right? The all-race inspired 911 GTR was ordered, but it has a 293,200 MSRP. That's a supercar with a super price. Now, while a lot of cars and car companies become tryhards trying to hit that elusive moving target of public opinion, the 911 has just held true to itself. And that, along with a classic design, turns my head every time I still find myself falling back to the 911 it's one of my top bucket list cars. The Porsche 911, I want it. If you've had a 911, ever had a 911, had a buddy that had a 911, ever seen a 911, take a picture and send it my way. Now all the pictures I use today are from cars currently for sale. So I put the links in the description. So please click on those and check those out. And thank you for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and share. Subscribe to our YouTube channel continue to share us with your friends and that is a corvette zr1 
and I think I'm in love. The Corvette ZR1 is the ultimate edition of the American supercar. With a supercharged 6.2 liter V8 producing 715 pound-feet of torque and 755 horsepower, this beast can launch you from 0 to 60 in 3 seconds. With a base price of $121,995 and options that push the sticker well over $160,000, the ZR1 pushes this American classic into supercar status, but not just because of the sticker price. This is the fastest, meanest, and most powerful Corvette to date, and yet it still has the refinement and creature comfort options to be a daily driver. For the demanding buyer who demands track performance, the roar of a monster engine, and a car that the valets will always park up front, the newest Corvette ZR1 is the perfect combination of beauty and beast. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and share. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Share us with your friends. Let's talk about cars tomorrow.